You, Father, were my first and only teacher. You taught me to read and write and to think for myself. And you helped me to see the world like you did, in a big, forgiving way. I waited a long time for someone else to teach me what I had to know. It certainly wasn't Miss Brunel. Emily Starr, stop that building or I'll smack you with your bum and keep you after class. Wait, that's <laughs> up your face. Arithmetic is no laughing matter. Ugh, I'll throw up if I have to write. I must respect my teacher one more time. Old brown cow's trying to break apart fiery spirits. Never. <laughs> Go there, girls. Go inside. Oh, there's lots of room. Hello, Ben Brandon. <laughs> Shelley's hair. Come along, please. Everybody be good and polite. Who's that? Sir, it's Mr. Mr. Plover, another man now. Come along, children, inside, please. Mr. Plover, how lovely to see you and how unexpected. Good morning, Miss Brunel. Uh, this is Mr. Carpenter. He's applied to teach at one of our schools. Good morning. Mr. Carpenter? Miss Burnett? Oh, oh, excuse me. The girls in the road. You are not going to endanger my job. Go. Uh, striking you woman, wouldn't you say? A striking, yes. You go on ahead. We won't be long. Excuse me. I know it's a nuisance, May, but I need another evaluation of Carpenter. Brilliant fellow. Written books, I understand. Left his post at the university under a bit of a cloud. He taught university. And we did an evaluation over in Hunter River, but there were problems. Of what nature? And he's a bit unorthodox in his teaching, bucking authority, that sort of thing. I see. Uh, we're short of teachers, May. This fellow's willing to live on a first year's teacher's salary. I have to give him one last chance. Why my school? Well, I'd like to see how he performs with difficult students. I believe you have a few of those. Children, Mr. Carpenter will be observing this morning. Today's English composition lesson is on the sonnet form of poetry. Please open your readers to page 124, sonnet 18 by William Shakespeare. <clears throat> there are 10 syllables in each line, 10 and 10 only. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. I beg your pardon? Oh, excuse me, Miss Brunel. I thought uh, you might like to read the poem first for its beauty. Please, Miss Brunel. Uh, an excellent idea. Very well. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. And summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometimes too hot, the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. 
But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Bravo! Splendid! Is this your latest attempt to drive me to distraction? What are you writing, anyway? A sonnet. See? After all the times I've forbidden you to write poetry. Except for schoolwork. You did say that, Elizabeth. Hmm. Shall I read it for you? Shall I compare thee to a winter's day? Thou art more fun to snuggle and more gray. It's all I've got so far. It's a lovely poem. Who in their right mind would spend time on a rhyme? <laughs> you just did. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Somebody has to get things started. I mean, if brown cow had a bow, she might actually smile sometimes. And I know Mr. Clover likes her. To William Plover Esquire, from May Burnett. With deepest admiration. For many nights I lay awake and prayed to find a lover. Now I feel my heartstrings quake. Thank God for Mr. Plover. Have you flown completely out of the coop? Yeah, what? What if she finds out about this? Here they come. Where are you gonna hide? Shh, here it comes. Take your seats, everyone. Children, come, come. Attention, children. For the next three days, Mr. Carpenter will be your teacher. Just pretend I'm not here. Now, children, stand and say good morning to Mr. Carpenter. Good morning. Sit. Please. Thank you. I, I don't encourage fawning in my classroom. What's our first lesson, Miss Brenna? History, Mr. Carpenter. 1066, the Norman Conquest of England. William, the Conqueror, knights, damsels, wonderful. You'll find the material in chapter three, pages 60 to 66. Thank you. Let's see. Dates, names, lifeless places. Oh, wait a minute, here's something. No, just another date. We need dates, Mr. Carpenter. How else can we keep track of, of when things happened? I'd rather know uh, why things happened than when they happened. The history is the factual record of precisely when and where things happened. See, I see history as our greatest story, the epic struggle of the human race. Loving, fighting, striving through the ages. At Blair Water, we teach facts, not stories. I'll tell you something now. The facts seldom do justice to the truth. He'll lose control if he doesn't rein them in. I wonder, May. Do you think we might continue this discussion at a later date? Perhaps over dinner, say the day after next? Is there something you need to tell me? Well, yes, in a way. Very well, then. Excuse me, Mr. Plover. I wonder if I might have a word. Excuse me, ma'am. 
With all due respect, I find it difficult to teach with Miss Brunel standing over my shoulder. Well, I'll uh, give her a couple of days off. Uh, we'll continue the evaluation on Friday. Thank you. About the uh, other problem, the... Um, Drinking? I don't like to bring it up. You have every right. And I haven't touched a drop since the episode in Hunter River. All right, then. I've known May Brownell since she was a little girl. She always liked flowers, pretty things. Other kids all teased her. Mr. Brunell hates flowers. Broda brought her some, but she wouldn't take them. She said they'd just die. Well, she'd give up her life, take care of her sick grandmother. I guess the flower part of her just died. She may be unhappy, but she's still a terrible teacher. And Mr. Carpenter's a thousand times better. Pack that in tight. Use your feet. Mr. Carpenter. I don't know him. He's the man who's teaching us this week. He's got brooding eyes, like a hero in a story. I can sense his tragic past. Back it tighter, tighter. Nice and tight. See that down there? Make it all even. Every one of us is born with a special gift. One thing that we do in a special way that nobody else can copy, that we love to do. Perry, isn't it? Oh, yeah. What's your special gift? Um, well, that, that'd be uh, getting around people, sir. See, I'm, uh, I'm going to be prime minister. Oh. Yes. My mother says Perry Miller's got ideas above his station. Yeah, well, her mom's got cow dung for brains. All right, that's enough. It'll take more than getting around people to become Prime Minister, Perry. Well, yeah, but I'm uh, got a speech of fine, sir. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> uh, ladies and gentlemen, you, you see before you a man who's, uh, well, who's, who's walked a mile in your shoes. And, uh, you see, I do a lot of good stuff, so, uh, <clears throat> on election day, I'll, uh, I'll appreciate your support. Thank you. Well, you've got my vote. <laughs> Ilsa Burnley, which one are you? I'm going to play Hamlet on the best stages in the world. You mean uh, Ophelia? No, I mean Hamlet. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him well. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. <laughs> Bravo! Our own Sarah Bernhardt. This is excellent. Would you do me the honor of signing it, please? Sure. I don't have to ask what your special talent is. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Kent. Emily's a writer. Indeed. I have much sympathy for writers. It's a path I've trodden myself. You're a writer? A real one? I was, if six stories in a slender volume of verse is enough to qualify. You actually wrote books? I'd like to hear something that you wrote. It's not finished. Like a flower that blooms unseen. She waits for someone who will bring a hand to hold, a song to sing, a ruby crown to make her queen. You have a lyric gift. I'm not sure about ruby crown. Oh, I like it. Uh, 
Flower's not quite right, though. Uh, did you write the poem for someone in particular? My Aunt Laura. She really is like a flower. Mm hmm. What kind? A wild rose. Good. It's a much clearer image. Like a wild rose that blooms unseen. It's better. Excellent. Now, I want all of you to find your special gift. And when you do, nurture it. Because if you ignore your talent, you may lose it forever. like that is especially bad for a child like Emily. He'll make no effort to discipline her. I'm teaching her that. What's more, the man's a drunkard. What? Are you sure? He failed his last evaluation on account of it. How do you know this? I overheard something. Just ask yourself why a university teacher, a man who's written books, would want to teach in glare water for a pittance. I thought he was only here to be evaluated. They plan to fire me, I know it. Mr. Oh. Plover intends to inform me tomorrow at dinner. And they intend replacing you with this drunkard? Poor May. There, there. Perhaps it's all just a misunderstanding. Mr. Carpenter thinks stories are more important than facts. Mm. We'll see about that. Are they? used to have a, an old friend who sat on the county board. A uh, Mr. Patterson, wasn't it? Yes, that's it. Yes? Mr. Carpenter. I was wondering, would you help me be a writer just until you leave? Are you sure you want to be a writer? It's the only thing I want. Well, then the question is, are you tough enough? It'll mean hard work, extra assignments, endless revisions, and criticism. You might not like that. Yes, I will, I promise. I should tell you, I only criticize work I like. Very nice is a phrase I reserve for mediocrity. You can criticize me all you want to. Very well. Bring in a few of your poems tomorrow. And remember, if you're gonna write, you have to read all the books you can. My Aunt Elizabeth doesn't allow me to read. She burned all my books. She won't even let me have paper to write on. I'll, uh, I'll speak to her. Oh, you better not do that. She'll make trouble for you. Hmm. Here. You take all the paper you want. Do you have pencils? Mm -hmm. All right. I'll bring some books in tomorrow. You can read here, anytime you like. Thank you. You're welcome. Did you notice anything funny about your new teacher? The way he talks, say, or, or smells like medicine? No. I hear he prefers teaching stories to teaching facts. Mr. Carpenter says, life's too strange and wonderful to be explained all by facts. What rubbish. I can't decide which crops to plant if I don't have the facts. How wet's the soil? What the prices are? Can I afford the seed? Without facts, we'd be in the poorhouse. Mr. Carpenter says a well-fed body often conceals a hungry soul. 
I certainly agree with that. What's the soul hunger for? Truth, love, beauty, and unity. That's what Mr. Carpenter says. Mr. Carpenter says rather too much for my liking. Dear Father, today Mr. Carpenter said he'd help me become a writer. Of course, you were the best writer in the world, and I'm just starting. I think I like Mr. Carpenter. He's a bit like you, though not as handsome. If you were here, I know you'd teach me everything I need to, to know. But you're not here. Try to imagine an entire suit of clothing made of chain mail. Not to mention the helmet. Oh, 100 pounds. Almost as heavy as Teddy here. Now, imagine putting all that metal on and trying to walk. Oh, oh. oh imagine, imagine getting on a horse. Uh, imagine how the horse felt. They had special hoists to lift the knights up and set them on their mounts. Tell us about the jousting, sir. Mr. Carpenter, may I have a word? Uh, we'll talk about jousting when you return from recess. Fifteen minutes, everyone. Yeah! 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 I, just, I just wanted to see how you were making out. Things seem to be proceeding well. You're a man of the world, Francis. I'd like your advice on a matter that isn't really academic. Certainly. Uh, how do you tell a woman that you've come to think of her in that way? Uh, in which way? Romance, flowers, that sort of thing. I've never had time before. Oh, uh, I see, I see. Uh, well, you, you could start by telling her that she's beautiful. Uh, wait, I'd better write this down. Um, tell her that her eyes are beguiling. Oh, beguiling. Her hair is like silk. Silk. And her skin is like satin. Skin is like satin. That's very good. Her heart will melt in your hands. All right, let's talk about this one first. I watched the night unfold around a lonely nightingale. Night unfold is a cliche, I'm afraid. Do you know what a cliche is? It's where words are used the same way so many times so that they don't mean anything anymore. Exactly. And <laughs> I've yet to read about a nightingale who wasn't lonely. Oh. Sonnet for Pandora. It's not really a poem at all, is it? Yes, it is. It is 14 lines, 10 syllables in each, and it rhymes in all the right places. Oh, no, 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 no. You need much more than that to make a poem. You need real feelings, originality, wisdom, and life. A poem should be alive. And mine isn't. Well, it's only a joke that rhymes. Tell me how to improve it. Well, I'd throw it away and start again. Throw it away? Well, it's hardly worth keeping. I'll throw them all away if that's what you want. Emily, wait. You were supposed to help me. I can't write. I can't do anything. Darling. I'll never be a writer. I'll show him. Here's everything I ever wrote and said in the pieces. I still think the Dudley baby looks like a peeled potato. Now there's the name. 
Spud Dudley. Oh, <laughs> oh would you look at that? Oh. Oh. <sighs> oh, I'm going to have to give this a really good scrub. Mm. Get this day now. Shut up! Well, let's die. There's men like you that drives ports to drink. Buck burners. All of you. Babe, did you think of that? Burners? Don't tell me you've caught this reading mania. I like poems. I swear there's a streak of lunacy in our family. Do they make me feel bigger than myself? You see, that is not a sane thing to say. Oh, look at the dust. This hasn't been done today. You're using your best handkerchief. you find your letter? It's on the table. Elizabeth, have you seen my letter? Uh, how could you? I didn't read it. I just was waiting for the right time. You mean after you had time to steam open the envelope? My dear Miss Murray. Thank you for your kind letter, explaining your hasty departure from our home. I spoke quite harshly to Margot, and she's still sulking. She's the daughter of Mother's dearest friend, and I'm afraid Mother has encouraged her. But my heart lies elsewhere, as I dearly hope you know. From the moment I first saw you, I knew I was in the presence of a kindred spirit. Mr. Plover, shall we get right to the point? Please, call me William. I won't give in without a fight, Miss William. No. For 20 years, I've been slaving for those ungrateful children, taking their abuse, trying to get a few grains of knowledge into their thick skulls. And I am not resigning now. But the rules are quite clear. Married women are not permitted to teach. Married? You have beguiling eyes. Hair like silk and... Skin like satin. He didn't like your poems. You told him you wanted his criticism. He thinks I'm no good. So you're giving up your dream you've had all your life just like that. Do you think I'm a writer? Father said you were. He wouldn't let you give up your dream. I want to 
want to talk to Emily. I am Emily's teacher. She's mad at you. Who is it, Jimmy? It's Emily's teacher. Have him come in. Come on in. Oh, you're drunk. You're right. But it's better to be a drunkard than a book burner. Oh, no, 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 not for that. You better come this way. Don't you know what you're doing to that child? What I'm doing? Don't you care either? Mm -hmm. Oh, Jimmy, throw him out. Well, let's hear what he has to say. Your niece has a gift. Why in God's name would you want to stifle it? You're in no condition to speak of God. It was God who gave her the gift. You mean that scribbling she likes to do? <laughs> scribbling? That scribbling could make her famous someday. Oh. Well, don't tell her that. She's excitable enough as it is. Writers must be excitable. Nonsense. It isn't nonsense, Elizabeth. What? Your niece has a rare talent. If you don't let her practice it, she may lose it forever. I can't believe I'm standing in my own no, home, no. allowing okay. myself to be lectured by a drunkard. Spoken <laughs> like a true presbyterian. Get out. You sanctimonious. Oh. I'll see that you never work on this island again. Is that good? Oh, no, but it helps. Try it. Mm. No, that tastes like kerosene. Why did I come here? Ah, uh, yes. Emily's gift. Oh, uh, I thought I had a gift once. I was going to be the next Walt Whitman. Whitman. I know that name. Imagine me, Whitman. The difference being that he actually wrote some poems, and I merely read them. I you know. My only gift is for disgracing myself in public. Here it is. Song for myself. I celebrate myself and sing myself for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I like that. Do you? I like it. I live it. I just can't write it. But you teach it. I do. Emily needs a teacher. Smart teacher. Someone who cares about her. Good. Don't you ever. 
never hurt her. They won't. Just thinking. What about? I know it won't be easy. But if I give up writing, I'll have more time for other things. What things? There must be something. Did you write all this tonight? Mm hmm. After you stop writing. See, you even failed at being a failure. Come on, out to the bar. Somebody wants to talk to you. Jimmy said a friend was here. Well, Jimmy doesn't lie. Uh, I'd certainly like to be your friend. I have to be a writer, no matter what you think. Well, I'm glad. But you said I should throw all my poems away. No. No, not this one. This afternoon. This afternoon when you ran away. I was about to tell you that your third poem was extraordinary. The, the cormorant drags its broken wings across the bitter land. He leaves a broken trail of dreams behind him in the sand. It's, it's, it's lucky. Thank you. to write, just better. Well, then I'll, I'll just have to teach you. Day. I'm all right. I've, uh... We have to go, Mr. Cobb. Uh, oh, <coughs> come on. We're going to be late. Come on up. Uh, what day is it? Oh, it's evaluation day, mister, but you're going to be writing up after this. No, no, I'm fine. I'm all right. I'm away. One for Perry, one for Jimmy, one for me, and seven <laughs> for Mr. Carpenter. <laughs> Laura? Oh, yeah, it's Elizabeth. Go on, go, go, go. Are you all right? Good morning. What is my best tea doing on the table? Only one who enjoys it. Where's my favorite teapot? Oh, don't tell me that drunkard spent the night here. He wasn't fit to walk home. He has to be at school. He's being evaluated today. Huh. If I have anything to say about it, he'll fail miserably. 
do you really prefer May Brownell? Or, or perhaps some foolish 20-year-old fresh out of normal school? At least Mr. Carpenter is an educated man. He's written several books. Real books? He thinks Emily has a gift, and I agree. Hmm. You're full of opinions this morning. Are you aware that stealing another's mail is a criminal offense? If I wanted to, I believe I could have you put into jail. Jail? Oh, don't be absurd. Laura. It was a momentary impulse. I regretted it the minute I did it. I will forgive you, Elizabeth, on the condition that you forgive Mr. Carpenter. Certainly not. It's not a comparable offense. You're right. Drunkenness isn't a federal offense. He cares about Emily. Do you think he's right about her scribbling? Yes. I believe she has talent. She's Juliet's daughter, isn't she? Yeah. And all the Murrays do tend to excel at all they do. Hmm. Fit. You're a generous woman, and I'm deeply ashamed. Yes. Uh, Jimmy will need these back for Sunday. bunch of kids, but likable enough. You'll grow attached to them in time. They seem quite promising. Here they come! Oh, okay. Everybody, come. Everybody take your positions! Excellent, Carpenter. No discipline problems here. Yes, Perry. Uh, should I collect the homework assignment, sir? The oh, whole of of course, the homework assignments. You know, I uh I especially enjoyed the arithmetic questions. Miss Brunel! Excuse me, Jenny, I I have news for you all. Mr. Plover and I are to be married. Therefore, I am resigning as teacher at Blair Water School. I think I've seen enough to say that Mr. Carpenter has passed his evaluation with flying colors. He is to be your new teacher, beginning as of now. Miss Brunel, you've got to listen. Whatever it is, Jenny, you can take it up with Mr. Carpenter. Try not to be such a fly in the ointment. It's not becoming. I hope you and Mr. Plover are happy together. Thank you, Emily. You can do whatever you like hit each other, throw your books across the room, set fire to yourselves. I am no longer responsible. Shall we, ma'am? Certainly, William.
Well, I won't make any promises. But I will do my best work for you. So let's get to work. This morning's events remind me of a story. One of the greatest love stories ever written. William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. I once heard a saying that when you're ready, the teacher you need appears before you. Mr. Carpenter may not be perfect, or even close to perfect, but he's my teacher, and I'm ready to learn. 